Hey guys, another uh, quick blender experiment here. So my uh, intention in this video was to take something that um, we created in ZBrush, and this was actually uh, one of the videos, uh, a couple of videos back, where we created, created this uh, cute cartoon uh, penguin. Well, at least I find him cute. So the idea is um, to see how do you take the poly paint um, that we um, created here in ZBrush, and without any UVs or uh, textures, how do you bring this into the uh, most recent version of um, Blender, right? So uh, here's the character, and I uh, strongly encourage you to check out that video if you want to create your own cute little uh, uh, guy. And then we, of course, uh, sculpted him, and then we also added some poly paint. But let me show you the process that uh, I followed to get this guy into Blender uh, very, very quickly. So in our video uh, where we uh, ended up was um, on this step here, we had a bunch of different uh, sub tools and each sub tool was custom poly painted just using the RGB colors uh, here in ZBrush, right? So the next step uh, would be for, uh, if you wanted to bring this into Blender, one of the things you might uh, want to pay attention to is the total number of points. At this uh, point in time, this guy is 1.4 million points. And maybe that's a little bit too heavy uh, to export something out as an FBX file and completely not necessary, right? So let's take a look at also how we can quickly optimize it um, and also retain our poly paint. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply go to my sub tool and click on the uh, button called um, Merge Visible. All right, as soon as I click on Merge Visible, you can see another tool was created and if I click on that tool, um, you can see that there is no really difference that uh, we can see, but there's no more uh, layers, right? The sub tool was just merged into one. Now, the cool thing about this is that now I can quickly optimize it. So I can take it from 1.4 uh, million points to something much uh, smaller, right? So if I jump into my Z plugin and I just have it uh, dragged here on my left side, what I need to do is I, I just need to make sure that I activate something called use and keep poly paint because I do want to retain uh, these colors. And the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say pre-process current. Once it's done, I can click on, I'm going to leave it uh, by default at 20% and just simply say decimate current. And uh, if you pay a close attention, you can see it just went from 1.4 million points down 290,000 points, keeping the poly paint uh, beautifully and really nothing seemingly has changed. But if I look at the density of the model, I know that this has been heavily optimized down to 290,000 uh, points, right? And this is great for something that is not really animated. Uh, and it's just uh, an experiment to you know bring in kind of like a still uh, image, right? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to export and press export. And let's just set this to uh, FBX format. And uh, let's call it uh, penguin.fbx and just say save. All right, as soon as we press save, we can see another menu comes up. In this menu, uh, you do want to make sure that it is set to bin because if you are exporting this into Maya, um, which we've done a similar experiment, right? We, we uh, explored how to uh, sh render out poly paint from ZBrush to Maya. Um, that requires this format, but in this case, we're gonna leave it on bin. And I'm just gonna say select it. If you had multiple um, sub tools and you did not merge it into one, of course, just say all. But in this case, I'm just gonna say select it. I'm just gonna say, okay. All right, so once you've done that, let's jump into Blender and let's start a new scene so we can see what the process is. All right, so here is our famous cube. I'm just gonna select it, press delete. Let's go to file, import. Let's just find the FBX file that we just exported out of ZBrush. I'm gonna select it. And in here, uh, you can see the vertex color is set to sRGB. And this is by default, so I'm not touching anything. I'm in, uh, currently in Blender 4.1. I'm gonna say import. All right, uh, it comes in kind of super small. If I wanna change the scale of this guy, I can just press S, start dragging, uh, click, press S again. Let's just do a little more. So something like this. If I wanted to align him and make sure he's standing on the ground, um, if you're new to Blender, if you're brand new, just uh, if you click uh, middle mouse button, obviously that's gonna uh, rotate it. If you hold on the shift key and press middle mouse button, that's gonna allow you to pan, uh, pan around. And then the scrolling uh, on your mouse will let you zoom in. Just keep that in mind if you're brand new. And then if you wanna snap into kind of the side view, hold on the Alt key and then press the middle mouse uh, button. 
and that will just do kind of a quick snap. All right. Now what I can do is just grab my move and just simply put him right on the ground. So I know he's nice and flat and then pressing middle mouse button, I can go uh, snap back into my um, perspective view, hold on the shift key, kind of position him where I like him. And now let's just simply activate the vertex color of our, of our model. And we can do that by selecting our model. And then let's click on this little button here called data. In the data, you're gonna find something uh, in Blender 4.1, something that's called color attributes. If I open that up, you can see that there's something in here called attribute. Just for the sake of this presentation, let's just double click on this and call it V color. And V stands for vertex, so you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it V color. All right, next, let's go ahead and switch our uh, shading by clicking on this middle bu uh, button right here. And now I'm gonna jump into shading. And if I zoom out, I can see what the current uh, shading network looks for uh, this model, right? Um, if I wanted to, uh, we, we do have a normal map, which I actually don't have a normal map exported out um, from ZBrush. So I'm gonna select this node, press delete. I don't really want that. Um, I'm gonna press shift A. I'm gonna go to search and I'm gonna simply click on this first um, input here called attribute. If I double click on that, you can see it kind of, it kind of just drop down. And now what I can do is I can take this color and connect it to this base color, all right? So now uh, we just successfully plugged in an attribute and that's that attribute is going to fuel our base color of our mesh model, right? All right, so next we just have to simply state the name of the uh, vertex color that we assigned, right? Which is gonna be V color and press enter. And now uh, it's going to successfully pull up that poly paint or vertex color, it's the same thing, right? Right into uh, Blender. If I go back to the layout, you can see what that looks like. And it looks uh, pretty awesome and it was very easy to do. And I hope this uh, is gonna help somebody out so you can quickly uh, poly paint your models in ZBrush and bring them into uh, Blender for some beautiful uh, rendering. So maybe in our next video, we can also set up some lights and uh, do a little more experimentation. All right, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in our next one.